Shake your palm front, Myrtle Citron, and we low, and we low. Shake your palm front, Myrtle Citron, and we low, and we low. Shake your palm. This video is a continuation of the FJMC series celebrating Jewish ritual via virtual celebrations, which the COVID-19 pandemic has caused us to do. Today's presentation is about Sukkot. Sukkot is the third of the pilgrimage holidays and begins on the eve of the 15th of Tishrei, which this year falls on October 3rd, just four days after the end of Yom Kippur. Sukkot is different both in mood and content from Yom Kippur. The origin of Sukkot comes from the book of Leviticus, in which God told Moses to command the people to live in booths seven days. All citizens in Israel shall live in booths in order that future generations may know that I made the Israelite people live in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Historically, Sukkot commemorates the 40 plus year period during which the children of Israel wandered in the desert living in temporary shelters. To observe this commandment and connect with our ancestors who wandered in the desert for 40 years, many people build Sukkot, a Hebrew word meaning booths or huts. If you were to come to my home, you could uh, come into one well as well. Sukkot is also a harvest festival and it is our link to nature and agriculture as farmers in ancient Israel often lived in Sukkot during the fall harvest period. In a normal year, Jews invite guests into their Sukkot to socialize and enjoy this joyous season. In this year of COVID-19, however, this event will be conducted, how this will be, event will be conducted will depend much on what the situation is in October, who the guests are, social distancing, and all the other restrictions. And even when some of our many of the restrictions are over, what we've learned from these times conducting virtual celebrations, whether they were Passover, Seders, or Shabbat, is that we can include many more friends and family members when we do things virtually. This video and the accompanying guide is aimed at helping you make the most of this holiday in these times. As an additional effort to deepen the meaning to deepen the meeting of the, the festival. The, uh, in, now the, we're going, we're partnering with uh, Two for Seder. Two for Seder is a nonprofit organization founded in honor of Joyce Feinberg, one of the victims at Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, by her daughter-in-law, Marnie Feinberg. Howard Feinberg, who I saw on this call, son of Joyce and husband of Marnie, belongs to the FJMC as part of the Men's Club of Congregation Olam Tikva in Fairfax, Virginia, where Marnie and Howard are members. Some of the materials in this FJMC guide are drawn from Two for Seder, and you can request their guide or let them know you are participating at https twoforsader.org in the sukkah. Now I want to turn the screen over to Marnie and ask her to tell us about her organization, Two for Seder, and about their programs for Sukkot. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, it's also nice to know uh, that my husband is, uh, is very famous, uh, part of the men's club. And he, uh, as you'll see in the next slide, he'll be putting up sukkahs uh, very soon. Uh, but Two for Seder itself, um, it is uh, really, even though it was born in tragedy, uh, we really take inspiration from Lot's life. Uh, Joyce always wanted to bring people together. She dedicated hours of charity work uh, to this, and uh, she really would be very honored uh, by the idea uh, that Men's Club has of bringing people not only in our sukkah for juice together, but also with other faiths. So um, what we, we uh, our original program was obviously to for Seder at Passover time. Um, but now that it's COVID uh, and it's fall, we were thinking, uh, how could you bring people together outside in a safe way? And uh, the sukkah actually, not only is it a perfect way to do that, as long as you open the flaps, 
but it is also part of our tradition. And we'll be talking about all those different pieces, uh, about how those different pieces come together. But I think the real key behind Two for Safe is that we want you to be able to find ways that you can do things to actually push back on anti-Semitism and hate and to, to do, bring Takun alum into the world. We are looking for as many ways as we can and we, we want your help and we want, would love your participation. Okay, thank you, Marnie. Marnie will come back a little later to talk about um, specifics of the program that they're working on. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit about the general observance. Uh, as you can see, she referred to our guys uh, putting up uh, a sukkah. This is a, for a community a community sukkah for a uh, for a home. But uh, you know, normally it's a time to start to think about this. Normally, as soon after the conclusion of Yom Kippur as possible, uh, we start building the sukkah. We could even start before Yom Kippur, and you need to assemble the materials. And uh, if you start before Yom Kippur, the only thing that you can't do is put the skach on. That's, you're supposed to do that after or, uh, between Yom Kippur and Sukkot. So there are many guides on the internet to doing uh, the sukkah yourself, to building it yourself. And there's also a place to order. A lot of you are familiar with the sukkah project. That's just www.sukkot.com. And you can build the sukkah out of many different materials, prefab aluminum poles, wood, PVC. My own club designed a PVC sukkah. We produce cell, cell to and set up for the congregation uh, members. And the roof must be of organic material known as skach, such as leafy overgrowth, skach mats, or palm fronds, plant material no longer connected with the earth. If you're far enough south to have bamboo stands, which we actually do in northern Virginia, and people and it grows like crazy and people want to get rid of it, they're glad to have us come and cut it down from the backyard and then we it's no cost to us other than the labor and then uh people will uh buy it so we sell the sukkahs but then we also um are in the business of providing skach uh but you can find your your own skach for free as well and then these prefab bamboo rolls are available through the sukkah project now there are many different ways to decorate the sukkah uh, they, you know, as people know, you hang fruit, gourds, Indian corn, pumpkins, uh, drape the walls with paper chains, create special pictures representing the Ushpizine Uz harvest themes, and even friends sitting together. So, you know, one thing in this year, if you want people to really know what you're doing, and there's only a couple of people in your or in your sukkah and other people online, then creating a nice welcome banner for people to see. Uh, it would be uh, a nice touch. And then you get ready for the meal by creating dishes made with fruits and vegetables of the season. It's also a great way to entertain those kids who are a lot of them who are at home right now <laughs> to put them to work on decorating uh, the sukkah and and uh, you know making the uh, posters and the and the flyers. Uh, so as we're working in this uh, this environment, there's uh, many prayers you can share with other people. You can say on Sukkot as you prepare for the meal. Uh, in the guide you can find on the website that will be up on the website, we have. Uh, all the prayers you need for the event in English and Hebrew with the transliteration. And some of the prayers might be said in each location by an individual household, or you can script it so that different people in different locations uh, can, can lead different prayers. So I'm going to turn back to Marnie to ask her to talk about guests, which is a theme of, of the two for Seder efforts and, and an important theme of Sukkot. 
Thanks, Bob. Um, okay, so this concept that uh, this, this, the Sukkot is not just for us, but is for us to share with others. This goes back to the very, very beginning. Um, and uh, the prophet Zechariah actually had a vision that all the nations of the world were in our sukkah. And uh, that's really the idea of bringing people together who are not, uh, not only their Jewish, but people of other faiths as well. Um, this is also the, the uh, uh, some of the spiritualists in the Kabbalistic tradition uh, in the Middle Ages, they took this a step further and Kabbalah tends to do, and they created this idea of the Ushpazim, where um, they, the ancestors of Judaism will, each one a day, will come into your tent, and they will sort of uh, suffuse it with their wisdom. And this is actually aligned to the idea of the Sifarot, so that idea of the, that step ladder um, that you see, um, you know, of, of spirituality and mysticism. Uh, each person represents not only their own wisdom and what they do for Judaism, but also the general spirit of God and um, how we can sort of attain that higher level. And um, the, so the Ushpazim, uh, each one you can see here, um, each one comes in a different day and you actually alter the prayer for each person because it would be rude to just have a general prayer for everybody. You have to, these are very important people and you want to introduce them properly. And if you're Sephardi, actually, uh, it's actually very good that there's a seat here because this is exactly what the Sephardi do. The Sephardi actually leave a separate uh, chair for uh, each, uh, each ancestor and they welcome that ancestor and no one is allowed to sit in that chair because the spirit of the ancestor is there. Uh, very similar that, uh, uh, you know, you, you never drink, um, uh, you know, the wine, uh, the extra wine uh, for Elijah at Passover. It's exactly the same concept. Um, but in recent times, uh, I think uh, folks have, uh, especially in the conservative movements and the reform movements, they've said, you know, we have uh, some, uh, some female ancestors as well, and they have their own wisdom as well. So um, this, this picture also sh shows the Ushbizot, um, which is, uh, you know, Sarah and, and uh, the, the different, so it's not just the, the ancestors themselves, but also some of the prophetesses and uh, different groups. So um, th that, that list of the Ushbizot, sometimes it fluctuates a little bit, but it's still, it's, uh, it's really it invite the ancestors that we know um, and then invite uh, some of the people that inspire us. And I think the nice thing about this is this gives us also uh, something to talk about with our guests. Uh, we actually um, encourage you to invite someone in a safe way, which we'll get to in a little bit, um, in a safe way to your sukkah. Um, so somebody who's already in your pod, who's of a different faith, this is a really wonderful way to have something to talk about um, because there's no formal dinner conversation like there is at the Passover Seder. Uh, but this is a really wonderful thing to talk about, you know, who, uh, who Miriam was, uh, what did Isaac actually do, and uh, what, what did he symbolize, and what does that mean to you and your religion? Um, that it's, it's really a wonderful way to bring people together. Okay, so um, as, as I was mentioning, the, um, we want to bring people into the sukkah. Uh, now, we, we actually have in our uh, little guide that uh, we were talking about earlier, uh, we have this exact fact sheet, and it's a sort of a formal fact sheet that you can rip out. It's all free, um, but these follow the guidelines for CDC. So this, uh, the latest that we had, which was about two weeks ago, was the last version of this. So I, it should be very up to date, um, but the idea that uh, if you are immune compromised and you are not comfortable bringing someone into your sukkah, then don't do it. Just do it virtually and uh, stay safe. We want you to be comfortable. Um, but this is, if you, if you are not immune compromised, this is really a great opportunity to have somebody about six feet away. Um, don't have a large group, no more than 10 people. I mean, to be fair, many Sukkot can't really fit more than 10 people anyway, uh, but we kind of manage it somehow. Uh, but this year, obviously, we want to keep some space. 
Um, there's also, um, if you have a, a kosher sukkah, if you have a sukkah for men's club, uh, it is uh, covered on three sides. Uh, and then one side has to be open. Uh, so we're saying that when your guests are there, if there's somebody that is not a family member, actually open it up. It's just, it's just one meal, let the air in, let it flow. And uh, that way it'll be uh, even, even safer for everybody. Um, we're also suggesting to uh, bring your own food and to you know, make sure the utensils are something that's disposable. Um, and that, uh, you know, even though we, we're probably not gonna wear masks when we're eating, uh, but if, if somebody needs to go into your house, if, I mean, for like to the bathroom or something along those, those lines, mask, it's time for that mask. Uh, we're all very familiar with it. Um, and this is probably the type of a protocol that if you have, if you're comfortable having people on your porch or on your, uh, in your backyard or in your garage or something along those lines, hopefully these are the same protocols that you use there. And um, we want you to be able to enjoy Sukkot, but we want it to be safe for COVID. So make sure you do, you do both and uh, it'll, it'll all work out just fine. Okay, thank you, Marnie. Uh, and this, as Marnie said, this fact sheet will be it can, uh, attached to the, um, to the rest of the guide that we'll be putting up shortly on the FJMC website. I'll share that link with you along with the, with the video uh, of, this, uh, of this webinar. So moving on to the virtual part of this, and this is what I've been involved with in a lot of different contexts uh, the, this holiday season. Uh, since most people are using Zoom for their gather, gatherings with their friends and family, our discussion and the guide, the more detailed guide, will focus on uh, some of the software, and but especially Zoom, but other software will have most of the same issues that we're, uh, we're concerned about. Are you eating in this sukkah? Even if not, all your online guests uh, can join you. Uh, and if they don't have a sukkah to eat in, it shouldn't stop them from eating outdoors. You can just sit outside for a little bit uh, to, to make it an experience a little more meaningful. And then uh, there is an issue if you're sitting outside in the sukkah, does your Wi-Fi connection actually reach the sukkah and uh, you know this is something you'll want to test prior to the holiday setting up a zoom session with a friend or a family member to check your connection and one thing that we can suggest that's very that's a lot easier and cheaper than you would imagine that if your wi-fi connection in in the sukkah is weak and your router is in the vicinity to consider a wired Ethernet connection to your computer. You could just uh, to get a hundred foot Ethernet cable to attach to your computer doesn't cost very much money, and it gives you a really good connect direct connection. Uh, and if you're using a modern laptop that doesn't have that kind of Ethernet uh, port or or uh, outlet on it, there's very cheap adapters that you can get. And I'll put some links in the guide to, to this kind of technology. Um, getting a little feedback. Is somebody not muted? I'm not muted. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Okay, fine. Thanks. Uh, so... You know, if none of these solutions work and you're still not getting a connection, but you want to do a Zoom uh, session in the uh, in the sukkah, you can consider, you know, just using your phone or a tablet on a cell connection that uh, you could use outside. Uh, and you know, it's difficult, if not impossible, to sync various voices over a Zoom connection, as you probably know. So it's better to assign prayers or songs to, to individuals or people in the same household. I think that's very effective. If you're, if you're connecting among families, get a family to lead a prayer or do a, um, do a song during the, the event. 
And because every sukkah and the decorations are unique and your guests are virtual and can't look around your sukkah, you might want to just move your camera around uh, or your laptop around to different elements of the of the sukkah for your guests to see and tell them, you know, why you've done certain decorations, why you've uh, put up certain uh, posters. Now, there's somebody on the call who is a big fan of uh, Stephen Sondheim, as well as, as some of the more traditional uh, uh, wise men. So, uh, you know, that's uh, Rashi, my Maimonides and, uh, you know, Stephen of Sondheim, uh, uh, who, you know, uh, you might include some of his songs. So this is a way to make your decorations personal. I mean, a friend of mine, he had his kids do individual uh, drawings of all the Ushbizine, and they kept them over the years. So the kids are grown and out of college, but he's still decorating the the uh, sukkah with those drawings that the kids did when they were, uh, I think, in, in middle school. And, you know, this bringing uh, children in is a great way of involving them and encouraging them to uh, to think about what they can do, talk about what kind of guests they might want to have in this in this sukkah. And if you're organizing an online Sukkot Seder, share a list of the Ushbizin with the other families, include all the kids and the other families in the discussions. And for an additional mitzvah and, and to take themes of tikkun olam into your holiday celebration, you can ask people on your sukkah list or, or your virtual guests to donate food to local food pantries that are in need once the holiday is over and there's several in our area make, or make a contribution to an organization that works to end hunger such as Mazon, the Jewish response to hunger. So then finally you can read Sukkot stories as a family or pick a books about Sukkot for the kids, and um, I think there's a few people on here who might have some kids that might be interested in this. So we have a list of, of books about uh, Sukkot, and uh, I'm going to stop the share for now and see if, uh, see if Alan and Marnie have any other, anything else to add? Let's see. Alan, you can unmute. Alan. <laughs> okay. Marty. Uh, well, I'd like to thank you so much for having Two for Seder in the Sukkah join you for this video. And, uh, we are really honored to be a part of this and to be a part of your celebrations. And uh, even though I know the conservative movement kind of looks down on this in general, here, if you don't have a perfect Sukkah, it's okay. I think uh, with the high holidays not being exactly the way that they normally are, consider setting aside a little space and say this is my sukkah but I would certainly encourage you to, to uh, see if your your local club has uh, the sukkahs because actually this is going to be our first year of getting a sukkah from uh, the Olam Tikva men's club when we're about it. and I have to give credit that that wasn't our original idea it was actually from Harshalom in Potomac and we were marketing their sukkah their sukkahs for several years and then we thought well you know why don't we just do it do it ourselves and i think uh and we're willing to share the uh, the design luckily we had a, a engineer physicist who was interested in uh, in doing this and uh and so uh i I'd, I'd like to open it up for a few minutes to see if anybody has any 
anything to add or any uh, suggestions that they'd like to share with, with Bob? Yeah. And my own, I, I don't seem my I don't seem to be able to get my picture up there. Um, You're on. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for doing this. This is really nice. And, and frankly, it's encouraging me to get back and get my sukkah up or get my son-in-law and daughter to the sukkah in their backyard. We've done it many years, but uh, with what's going on, we got to put it on the back burner. And this uh, is encouraging me to get uh, hot again. Um, you know, I was uh, instrumental in a lot of the, uh, the circuits that we sold through Har Shalom. And it's so good to hear you guys took off on your own. And I think um, uh, Moldover, uh, Don, what's his Don son's name? Yeah, and Beth Emmett. They also, Beth Emmett, uh, and they're also doing it. Yeah. And I got my original idea from Ben Sedek. So we've, you know, we've passed it around, and I think it's wonderful that, you know, other clubs are selling them to their own people to build circus. That's wonderful. And and, and um, did you record this or get some of the uh, – can I get to you? You guys have some great ideas, little tidbits – that I didn't write down or catch, but I would like to capture. Um, no, this is being recorded and also going to, and I'll put it on the FJMC site, a link to the recording along with the uh, the detailed guide that has the handouts, like all the prayers um, did as a tear-off. So you can just take the prayers separately or, or uh, Marnie's uh, guide on how to do a safe, uh, safe event. Very good. And Thank you. Thank you. So, hey, Bob. Yeah. Er, hey, I just want to thank uh, you and uh, and Marnie and uh, and Alan for this. It's just great uh, that uh, we're fortunate, Olam Tikva, to have uh, <clears throat> Marnie and uh, and Howard, I guess, in the congregation. <laughs> and um, just wonderful, and I think one of our you know, best programs that OT had been when <clears throat> we had a chance to interview Marty you know, in pre-COVID days, a wonderful session with <clears throat> many uh, congregants. And uh, I'm sorry we, we didn't do two for SATA this year, but this is wonderful. And let's hope that uh, by next uh, Pesach, uh, we can have a full auditorium either at OT or any other synagogue or men's club, you know, Part of FJMC do that. So I just wanted to thank you and good luck and I, thanks, work. thanks, sir. I think you really led into something that I was actually going to put in a plug for Marnie and her <laughs> and her uh, speaking. I mean, she does a great brunch event when we can do those kinds of events on you know on the origin and the development of two for Seder and the work that she's done in the past year i mean she was really taking off when things got shut down but as you said we had a great event in january i think it was with uh, with her and uh you know i have a my wife's family's from pittsburgh so i have a special uh, you know, spot for them, and uh, and we're trying to show our, our support for that group. Um, so, unless there's any other uh, comments, I'll give you the uh, the contact information here. I'll share my screen again. Uh, and. Let's see. Okay, so here's the email addresses for all of us. Alan Cahan, that's his email address at alancahanfjmc at gmail.com. Mine is, uh, my current address is president at seaboardfjmc.org. And there's Marnie's if you want any more uh, information. And there is the... Uh, the websites for the FJMC materials, uh, which hopefully I'll have up before Rosh Hashanah. Um, and then the two for Seder, uh, their sukkah uh, site. So 
I will make one more plug that I was asked to do uh, that, you know, this, uh, the U.S., um, the, um, the FJMC has uh, the Yellow Candle Program, which every, well, most of you know that uh, we're trying to reach out to use that to, and to remember the Holocaust. And uh, one of uh, our promoters of this is Erwin Harris of Tree of Life uh, Synagogue. And so we're looking for guys to help spread the word on this program. And I was asked to share this information and this will also be put up on the, uh, on the website. So we're looking for guys, this is mainly for the FJMC guys, who are willing to help out, fill out a survey, uh, volunteering to spend a few hours to contact people about the uh, program, about the Yellow Candle program, because we're trying to reach out beyond the FJMC clubs to other organizations, which is uh, to both Jewish organizations and 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 community organizations to talk about the Yellow Candle program. So, okay, would, I, would anybody else like to share anything? Uh, if not, I'll thank you all for for joining us and wish you a healthy, healthy and happy new year. Would you like to say, Say goodbye, Alan and Marnie. Uh, discussion prompt. Um, and, uh, everyone. Two, 